October is Breast uh, Cancer Awareness Month, and uh, I'm here to talk to you today about breast cancer and breast cancer awareness. Now, by far, breast cancer is the most prevalent cancer in women throughout the world. Uh, its highest incidence is in Western developed countries like the United States and Europe, but uh, the incidence of breast cancer is increasing exponentially in developing countries like India and China, where Historically, breast cancer risks were very low. So, so the question is, why is breast cancer sweat, uh, spreading around the world and, and increasing in incidence? Well, that's what I'm going to talk to you today about, uh, risks and myths about breast cancer. And hopefully, uh, this information will, will provide some benefit and, and maybe lower the risk of breast cancer in, 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 uh, in some of the, the, the uh, women that uh, hear this information. What this slide shows here is the 10 leading uh, cancers in women. As you can see on the, on the left-hand side, breast cancer uh, is by far the, the leading uh, cancer. And, and then what that first column shows is the incidence of breast cancer. In other words, how many women are diagnosed with breast cancer every year? And, and as you can see, it's, it's huge compared to the other uh, types of cancer. The second bar in, under breast cancer represents how many women die from breast cancer every year. So while uh, the incidence of breast cancer is quite large, uh, the survival rate is actually uh, pretty impressive. It's about 75%. This is in contrast to lung cancer, which is the next set of bars over. The incidence is maybe a third of breast cancer, but more women die from lung cancer than breast cancer. So what causes breast cancer? Well, there is a cause that we know of, and that's uh, mutation of the BRCA gene. This is what's known as the breast cancer gene. Um, there are actually two of these uh, genes, BRCA1 and BRCA2. And what the BRCA genes do, uh, they're known as, or, or referred to as, tumor repressor genes. Uh, these are genes that are in your body, and, and they are, are really the first line of protection against any kind of cancer. What happens is if a cell um, DNA mutates or transforms into a cancer cell, if these genes are working, they turn on, they make the cells stop dividing and die and, and destroy. And that's how you rid yourself from of, uh, cancer, prevent getting cancer. Now what happens is, if, this genes, uh, if these genes are mutated, um, they, they don't work. And as a result, the cancer develops and grows. Now this gene was discovered in women who, uh, where breast cancer runs in the family. In other words, the mother would have breast cancer, her sisters had breast cancer, their daughters had breast cancer, their, their granddaughters got breast cancer, and, and uh, it's a very <laughs> deadly form of disease. Uh, as you can see in this next slide, there's about one in 10 chance of uh, a woman uh, just living to 70 to get breast cancer. But if you have a mutation of the BRC1 gene, that risk goes up to 60%. If you have a mutation of the uh, BRC2 gene, that risk goes up uh, to 40%. If you have a mutation of both the, the BRC1 and 2 gene, the risk is 90 to 95%. It's not an issue if you're gonna get cancer, it's when you're gonna get cancer. And there are women who, uh, you can get genetic testing for this, if it runs in your family, and uh, women who test positive, uh, oftentimes opt to get uh, prophylactic mastectomies, um, just, just to, to save their lives, to prevent breast cancer. A perfect example of this is Angelina Jolie, uh, Christina Appleby. Um, now, the, the, the one thing about the BRCA gene, it's a very deadly form of, uh, of, of type of cancer, but it's also very rare. It only accounts for five at the most 10% of all breast cancers. Uh, the other 10%, uh, uh, excuse me, the other 90%, 95%, we don't know really what causes them. But there are risk factors, and I want to run through some of those risk factors today. One is race. By far, uh, uh, breast cancer is most prevalent in, in white women, much more uh, higher incidence than in black women. But if you can see on this chart, the top line, the blue line, represents uh, cancer deaths, and that blue line represents black women, and the pink line below it represents uh, uh, white women. So more white women get breast cancer than uh, black women. So more black women die from breast cancer. The question is why? 
and, and it goes beyond economic and social factors. It, it's, it's really unknown. And there's a lot of research uh, going into this. this you know, I think um, it's possible, and this is the theory, is they, that, that uh, black women may have a gene, a tumor suppressor gene in them, that is not the BRC gene that, that is uh, mutated and, and might uh, cause the uh, deadly form of breast cancer. So race is an important factor. Another factor is weight. Women who are heavier have a higher risk of breast cancer than, than uh, thinner women. And this is a, a circumference of weight and, and risk factor. Okay? Um, another factor is height. Taller women have a higher incidence of breast cancer than short women. This is a study that's done in, uh, with Korean women, but it, it's across the board. Taller women, higher incidence. Exercise is a protective effect, has a protective effect against breast cancer. Uh, women who exercise regularly have a lower incidence of breast cancer than women who don't. But even if they do get breast cancer and they continue to exercise, uh, recurrence of breast cancer is, is reduced by almost a quarter. And, and with recurrence is oftentimes when a woman gets a, a tumor in one breast, has surgery, is cured, uh, years later they might get a tumor in, another, in the other breast. Uh, that's recurrence. So, uh, it reduces that. Also, it, it reduces uh, mortality of, from breast cancer, and also overall deaths. I mean, it basically, the people who exercise <coughs> cardiovascular disease that's, uh, <coughs> is, uh, is reduced uh, as well along with cancer. So, exercise has a protective effect. Uh, smoking, it's like the, uh, you know, the, it's, it's a terrible thing it, for, for not only lung disease and cardiovascular disease but it exacerbates uh, many other forms of cancers, including breast cancer. And, and the study was just done, uh, published last year, that showed that women that smoke have a huge uh, uh, increase in, in, in breast cancer risk. There's other, there's other environmental toxins which are associated with risk. For example, uh, alcohol consumption, exposure to, to radiation, exposure to toxic chemicals, and uh, like herbicides, and things like that. Those are also risk factors. Those are environmental risk factors. But what is the number one risk factor? Okay, the, 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 the worst thing or the, 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 the biggest risk factor that, that's been established. And that's estrogen. The, a woman's lifetime exposure to estrogen is the, is the critical risk factor. And, and why? Well, estrogen stimulates the breast to grow. Uh, it stimulates normal tissue. It stimulates cancerous tissue. And the more estrogen you're exposed to, the greater your risk for breast cancer. And let me let me break this down a little bit in terms of uh, choices and, and just basically lifestyles. In the age of menarche, or, or really when a, woman, a girl reaches puberty, when she has her first period. In the United States, the average is around 12, 12 and a half years old. If a, if a girl reaches puberty before that, it greatly increases her risk of, of developing breast cancer later in life. However, if she uh, can delay puberty, 13, 14, 15, uh, this is a huge protective effect. Uh, in, in fact, a girl, uh, if, you can, if you can push it just a year and a half uh, past the average, uh, breast cancer risk is reduced by literally 50%. Uh, <clears throat> another factor is uh, having children. This, these studies were originally done uh, studying nuns because nuns who don't get married, don't, get, uh, don't have children, they have a, high, a higher, much higher uh, incidence of breast cancer than anyone else, uh, and women as a whole. So it's also been shown that women who have many children actually have a, uh, it has a protective effect and actually have a lower risk of cancer. Another uh, point of this is children, or women that have children when they're very young, uh, when they're teenagers or early 20s, also have a, a very protective effect against, it also has a very protective effect against developing breast cancer. This is um, associated with, um, uh, really, it's, it's kind of the same thing. If, if a woman's gonna have many children, she usually starts young. So, so that's a protective effect. <clears throat> uh, another thing is breastfeeding. Uh, why, uh, and that really is because the breast is a fully developed function. The breast is kind of a unique organ in that it's really undeveloped in a girl until she reaches puberty. And then when she reaches puberty, 
the breast develops, but only really develops a little bit. Okay? It's never fully developed until a woman has, gets pregnant, has a baby, and breastfeeds. And then the, 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 the cells in the mammary gland quit dividing and they start functioning. And, and, and that's protective because basically the cells in the breast become terminally differentiated, it's called. And, and the reason for that is in a, in a normal or a, a non-pregnant woman, the, the cells turn over a lot. Estrogen cycles every month and it makes the cells grow and turn over. Um, uh, and cells that are dividing are more susceptible to uh, gene mutation. And the reason is cells that divide, the DNA unwinds so it can re uh, uh, replicate itself. And when DNA is unwind, it's, it's more susceptible to spontaneous mutation or carcinogen or uh, radiation induced uh, mutation. When, it, when a cell is terminally differentiated, the DNA is tight and balled up and tight, and it's very resistant to mutation. So having children early differentiates the breast and it becomes refractory to, to, to mutation. Another thing is birth control pills. Uh, they're exogenous estrogens, high doses of estrogen. Um, they, they are a risk factor. Now the risk factor comes uh, really uh, after uh, five years of, of use. Uh, most, most girls, uh, if they want to go to college and start their career, they put off having children um, until they, they're, they're through. And so they use breast, uh, birth control maybe for a few years. But there are women that take birth control pills for sometimes 10, 15, sometimes 20 years. And, and, and that, those women have exponentially high risk of breast cancer. Menopause. This is like the flip side of uh, 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 puberty and reaching puberty. In other words, the earlier a woman hits menopause, the lower her risk of, of developing breast cancer. The later a woman reaches menopause, the higher the risk, because it's just more years of being exposed to the cyclic uh, changes in estrogen. And then when a woman does hit menopause, oftentimes they take hormone replacement theory, uh, therapy to ease the uh, side effects of menopause, like hot flashes, and, and also often prevents osteoporosis and things like that. Again, a few short period of time of estrogen replacement therapy is not dangerous. But uh, some women uh, take hormone replacement therapy for many, many years after menopause. And, then, and again, the risk factor goes up exponentially. So this is a chart here that kind of shows a, a, a woman's risk of breast cancer. And so when you're young, it's very low. And as you get older, it creeps up. And the, and the top line is a woman who never has children. That, that's a high risk group. But having children uh, reduces it almost 25%. And then if you add other things like avoiding alcohol and cigarettes and regular physical activity and breastfeeding, all these things lower your risk of breast cancer. So there's decisions that can be made and choices that can be made that will lower the risk of breast cancer. Now, currently the five-year survival rate for breast cancer is, is about 75%, but that's increasing every year. And uh, a, a lot of things can be done uh, for a woman if she knows the risk factors to, to reduce her risk. But if a woman is in a high risk group, and, and, and there's plenty of women in a high risk group, if they're aware of the risk, they need to do what's necessary to, to stay on top of the, the problem. In other words, regular uh, exams, uh, seeing the doctor, mammograms, that sort of thing. So if you can catch it early, the prognosis is much better than if you catch it late. So, that's top of the problem. Talk about the risks and the myths of breast cancer, and hopefully this information will help uh, someone hopefully make uh, good, good decisions. Thank you.